So, um, well, welcome, everyone. This is the first uh, open, let's say, Grumar Lab meeting that uh, we are having. The goal of all of these meetings is to bring everyone into the discussions about Grumar Lab and where we are going. Um, and well, basically, have open discussion. Uh, the agenda for today is based on conversations with uh, Alberto and me. So we are now in this meeting like nine people. So I suggest that everyone joins the Google Doc and feel free to uh, keep adding agenda items. The initial items we, we would like to discuss uh, are basically uh, first, what we understand by open source program offices and by inner source program offices and the kind of work we are doing in, in Remote Lab and the dashboards we have so far. Uh, then have some open discussion about this working group that probably we can start with this as first step. Uh, we are that many people. Then uh, what we would like to do, if there's any time, oh yeah, uh, Andy, the URL for the notes are in this Google Doc. Um, then make a migration from uh, the dashboards we have in GitLab that are currently a store in GitLab to uh, the Siegel's place, which is, let's say, the current Grimoire Lab. So if there's time today for this, we will we will do this sharing the screen. And, um, and so everyone is welcome to join. Um, then we would like to, to have some roadmap definition, at least for the next month. Uh, just a big disclaimer here, as the first ones discussing about this were Alberto and me, the main discussion we had was mainly focused on, on dashboards and panels and how to produce all of these and migrations and so on. But as we are nine participants right now, uh, we can discuss or we can have a, a broader discussion about uh, Grimoire Lab. So what we think, and Alberto, correct me if, if, if you have some other idea, what we want to have with this uh, meetings, weekly meetings, is to have an open forum for everyone to participate, to be aware of the discussions that we are having, to learn how Grimoire Lab works. Um, basically, depending on the people we are able to, to, to be and to attend in the meetings and to help with this, to have specific discussions for each of the tools we have. So we see that the very first discussions, or we intended to, this to uh, to be about the, the panels and dashboards because this is where um, mainly Alberto and me are, are focused and we are maintainers of Sigils. But uh, if there are other people, in this case, Santi and Valerio and Enrique and Georg and Wolmat and some others, so if you have other opinions, questions, comments, so we are here to help and, and to work together to, to advance in the Grimoire Lab development. So I don't know if... Uh, so any comment or questions? I have a, I have a thought. Mm -hmm. I think it will be really good to bring more of the Grimoire Lab uh, discussions into the open and to have more community involvement there. And I would also be really looking forward to the connection between the metrics that we defined and how they're implemented in Remore Lab, and maybe we can improve some of the metric definitions based on how Grimoire Lab is implementing it, and there are some learnings that go both ways. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Personally, I would really like to see these sessions uh, like lower the bar for people to use Grimoire Lab, whether it's installing or whether it's um, using particular features of the software. So maybe this has been talked about, but just making the software considerably more approachable to anybody with an interest, as well as kind of in that regard then encouraging contributors from across the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it also seems Grimoire Lab has a lot of different tools 
or libraries that do uh, does different things. So can we also like uh, categorize the different areas? For example, if we want to mine certain data, we can use we can focus this week on this specific area mm -hmm. so that people could uh, pay more attention to that. Then yeah. the next week, maybe we take one other tool or library within Grimoire Lab and look into it and play with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, more comments, more ideas. These are great. Naturally, we don't have to do them all this week. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> these are great ideas. Um, and then just so you all know too, um, you know how I send out that weekly newsletter? I'm mm -hmm. going to start using these sessions as a way to capture what's going on software-wise, mm -hmm. just FYI. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, Manrique or Santi or Valerio, Andy, you, you don't say anything, if you have any comment. I, I assume you hear us, right? Yeah, we are hearing you. Um, okay, now, okay, I, I was about to say that I quite agree with Armstrong's uh, comment about a more clear overview of all the components and what they are used for. And that's all, that's also related with the workshop we had on San Diego. Mm -hmm. That the, the idea of repeating it uh, online. So I think we can uh, even split the workshop in several steps. Like okay, let's start working with the whole platform, how to make it easy to install and stuff like that. And then another one probably okay, let's understand what Percival does, how it works, how it's good for, and, and samples like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that will help also to clarify which its component what it does and what it's for and then the whole platform as a whole was for. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Again, um, these are some ideas also to discuss where people would like to see improvements again. Mm -hmm. uh, Valerio, can you uh, speak up, sorry. Yes, like this, the pressure, or no? Otherwise, I'm going to write. If we uh, start with the microphone. Or Valeria, I can still not hear you. Yeah, yeah I can't hear you. So now Valeria is muted. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a matter of having uh, a higher microphone, maybe. I mean, the, the volume. No? OK. Maybe, uh, maybe, Valeria, okay. maybe you can write down. Hi, this is Antti. Uh, Antti. While, while Valerio is fixing the pro his problems with the microphone, uh, my comment, and I think, well, one, one of the things that I would like to, to improve regarding that the people that are out there trying to use our tools and trying to know what we do, it's to, well, my idea is first we need a, probably a blog that uh, we can, where, where we can add all the features that we are adding and how to use the tools and how to use the new features, etc. And another thing that I want to do is to improve the, the way that we do the releases. So now the, the things that we do are very manually. And the, the packages with the changes that uh, they usually include a news document with all the new features but they are not well writing we usually use the just the entries in the log so mm -hmm. most of those things are not interesting for someone who is not a developer 
So my idea is to to improve uh, that area too, mm -hmm. which will be first to create the the packages, not like we are doing now, which is manually. And the next thing, well, in and the idea to do this is to use one of the things that uh, GitLab is what GitLab guys are doing. They have several tools for building their components and they can create a release automatically, including all the new features without writing anything. Well, they write things in the in the commits, no? Mm -hmm. but, but when well I can explain that later. It's it's not a yeah, yeah. it's very technical. So but I would like to do something like they do. So Matt, for instance, we wouldn't have to ask us for the for the new features each week. So yeah. he probably can use the, the the document that exactly we generate yeah. in that way. That would be great. And so I can use that document and this meeting. Then I can just capture everything. Exactly. And and, and encourage people to get to the to this very extensive document. I won't put all of this in the newsletter, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but encourage people to come here. Okay. Um, by the way, I really like the idea of, of how, um, how to engage people who aren't necessarily developers as well. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if I look back at some of the longer metrics discussions, it was around things like release. Do you remember that discussion? Mm -hmm about how we go through the metrics release and how we do that. And so thinking about how, how releases are handled in Grimoire Lab, I think would really draw on a lot of people who don't necessarily know the technology under the hood, but would have nice insight. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, maybe we can, I know we are working on improving the tutorial one of the things you might also be able to do here during a meeting in the future is to go through the tutorial together. Yeah, I'll comment on that too. I think that there's a real opportunity here too to, to spend some meeting time. So for example, in uh, Georg's example of going through the tutorial, of actually doing a recorded session that is walking through the tutorial and that recorded session would then be available for everybody to observe or view to work through the tutorial, or to, to do the tutorial. So, I mean, we can, we can capture almost like learning sessions here and post those. Yep, exactly. I think that would be very valuable. Yeah, so we've we've done indeed something similar internally in Viteria. Uh and then this has helped to realize certain things about the documentation we have and so on. So yeah, that's definitely uh, something to do. Um, okay, um, thank you. Oh, Valerio and Alberto, thank you for your comments. So Valerio is basically saying. Uh, oh yeah. So basically how to reflect the use of each component, metrics implemented and so on, and move them to the tutorial. Um, and then a way, this would be a way to easily measure the results of this uh, working group. And Alberto, I don't know if you want to, to say this uh, to the crowd. Well, yeah, I was basically thinking that my main goal here will be having people involved in in dashboarding tasks, I mean, once you have the data, start working on top of the data to, to build metrics with with the dashboards. Mm -hmm. I see that as the easier way to get real things working. Of course, mm -hmm. it's interesting to have all the tool chain involved in the sessions. Uh, I think that the idea of having recorded sessions of about how to install uh, particular tools or the whole tool chain could be 
uh, great also, but uh, even in those cases, I say that probably having the metrics is uh, way more visual and probably more interesting for, for the community mm -hmm. to get them engaged. And then we can go for, for the details, but probably having a quick glance of what you can achieve just by having your data there and then start building some visualizations in Kibita or Kibana could be a good icebreaker to, to have people engage. But mm -hmm. basically I agree on, on everything. There are a lot of things we can do. There are a lot of sessions we could record as kind of tutorials, starting by following the Grimoire Lab tutorial. I'm not sure if the Grimoire Lab tutorial is the best way to, to start, but it could be one. Um, and well, uh, I'm open to participate on all the sessions we are talking about because I think I could help on most of them. Probably for the most more more technical technical ones, other people like Valerio or, or Santi could help too. And I'm not sure if we are going to be able maybe offer credentials for chaos dashboard for people in the meetings in order to have them working with real data without having to uh, executing all the all the tool, the tool chain so that's our other these are other things we could try to move forward mm -hmm. i don't know who is in charge of the chaos dashboard but i think jesus from long time ago was thinking about uh, opening the, the dashboard to, to the community so they can go there, play with the data, create visualizations and, and so on. So maybe that would be a good idea to, to get people working with real data without the initial steps. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh... I really support the idea that we could access to community members to the chaos.bridgeurge.io dashboard and use this as our playground. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like uh, I agree with you that probably playing directly with the panels and dashboards is the, like the uh, a good first approach even for non-technical people. So we can bring everyone into the same place and start understanding what's going on there. However, there are other tools that are useful as for instance, Armstrong mentioned so there are certain tools that are doing certain things. So for instance, the work that is being done by Jesus and, um, and Sean, as far as I remember in the, in the evolution working group using Percival and then some Python notebooks is, is another approach, which is we take one of the specific tools, which is Percival in this case, and then we do things. Um, the goal of this working group, I would say, is to advance in the development of Grimoire Lab um, and perhaps as a second case is to bring users to the platform in somehow, but this is again open discussion. This is my opinion. Um, perhaps at some point we can have even two meetings where one is for users and another one is for developers. But what I would like to, to bring here is transparency about how we mark lab works and the several tools. Um, for instance, I know that, uh, in the following weeks, months, at least uh, Alberto and me, we would like to keep advancing in panels or in dashboards. And we even have a roadmap for this that we want to share, that we want to share with, with you. I know that Santi has in mind the specific developments for Sorting Hat, which is the Identities Manager. So having a specific day where we we'll start bringing requirements and opening the discussion and the next steps about Sorting Hat is probably another session. Um, Santi, I don't know if you have a specific uh, comments around uh, uh, some of the tools right now in Grumar Lab that you will say, okay, we are, we will work for sure, or we are working right now in Arthur or in some other tools. So. Yeah, well, we are normally our main focus in Viterja is to work in Perceval, which is the tool that retrieves all data. But the other tool that 
we are working now mostly it's in uh, uh, in Arthur, mm -hmm. which is like a job scheduler. So the idea is to have jo this job scheduler that will run Perceval jobs to retrieve to retrieve data from many data sources at the same time. So you don't have to run them uh, by hand or using this other tool that, that we have, which is Mordred. Uh, that's those uh, two tools are the ones that are that will receive receive more uh, effort mm -hmm. on our side. But in any case, I'm preparing preparing a roadmap that I think it will be ready for next week, so we can talk about that. Yeah, would be great. Okay. So could I, um, uh, I'll say something based on, this is all super interesting conversation. Um, I'm going to put on my professor hat for just a second. Mm -hmm. You can all tell me, no, this makes no sense. But <laughs> <laughs> would it make sense to actually think about a longer term, like an agenda that you would see in a class? So, you know, four weeks of, of developer modules, four weeks of, of user modules, um, you know, a couple of weeks of, of how Grimoire Lab is connecting with the chaos metrics. You know, that it, it kind of sets it out a little bit so that folks know kind of what the arc is. It, again, it may not make sense, but it might also make sense to give some structure. Mm -hmm. I think Whatever it might be. I think it makes sense. But uh, the point is that the development of Perceval, for instance, will take place, either we have the four weeks of Perceval, uh, let's say, development open or not. So the question here is how, how we bring both things into the same meetings. Or how, so, that, so the point is how to be more transparent and bring everyone into this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It may or may not work. Just a thought. Yeah, yeah. I think there would be something to be said about not having like one meeting, one week being about Percival development and then the next meeting being about release schedules and then the next meeting be about integrating with chaos metrics and then the next meeting being about using sorting hat and then the next meeting. Mm. I think some consistency might be valuable. That's again, just my take from a, yeah, maybe maybe we can wait till Santi has the roadmap. Okay. Um, yeah. So then this is a roadmap specifically for Percival and Arthur, I guess. Perfect. Santi, me if I'm wrong. And then uh, Alberto and me, we have some other ideas about the panels and seals and so on. So we can add this to the roadmap. And then we would have like the three main areas of development, seems to be. And then based on this, we can, we can try to schedule to have some, at, at least, two, three months in advance. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, like all agenda items subject to change. Hmm. But, but that would be great, what you're saying. I know, Santi or Valeria, what do you think? I, I couldn't understand, well, if you are talking about how we should schedule uh, these meetings or how we should schedule to work in which or it was mostly just about thinking say out to january 1st 2020 so like like a class and so um yeah yeah, yeah i i, I un understood that but what i mean is hmm. Are you talking about what we are going to do in these meetings? Oh, or yeah. What yeah. we should do to the end of the year? Okay. Yeah, no, in, in the meetings, just so people okay. externally have an idea of what's going on. Okay, okay. Then I, I got it. Yeah, so I see, for instance, so if you go for, I don't know, for the OpenStack Foundation, they have like these design meetings, and they have design meetings like uh, three months or six months, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, in the design meetings is where people are basically bringing requirements, bringing ideas, discussing about new things and so on. Hey, thank you, Andy. Andy like, just left, he said. Um, so these are the places where 
people are discussing about the let's say the um, uh, the new features that we are having and, and so on. But then they are having like weekly meetings where they have quick fixing and and bring to the uh, to the discussion other things. So and then we have the idea of Matt of how to attract more community. So then we bring people and we teach people how to use the, the tools and, and so on. So there are two, three different things. Um, the goal of, of these meetings at the very beginning, and this is just, again, my, uh, my perception was to be more transparent in the remote lab development. Um, so perhaps what we can do is once we have the roadmap by Santi, um, we add the, the tools we have or whatever. Um, and then we can try to work on the on Matt's idea where each of the weeks, for instance, something you say, okay, we have in the roadmap for the next four weeks advance in Percival, only Percival, because we are developing these three, uh, I don't know, new backends. Okay, so then we can have a, a part of the meeting for uh, these requirements and features and well, technical discussion um, and, and other things. And then part of the meeting might be to to have some introductory session to teach others how to use the tool, or we can work on specific documentation. So for the next meeting, people can use that documentation to run this, So I don't know. So I'm, I'm trying to mix both worlds, but I don't know if this will work, that's all. What do you think? It makes sense? It makes sense to me. Who's um? I'm gonna take a guess that anonymous iguana is Georg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so, do y'all see that in there? Does yeah. this? So. And again, I mean, these are just. This is draft. I'm guessing. Does this? Is this run in line with what you were talking about, Danny? Uh, yeah, for instance, we can we can start with panels. Uh, I'm not sure about this discussion here, so this is something we have to discuss. Well, uh, okay. But we can start with the dashboards till uh, Santi has the roadmap. That might be in a week or two or three, okay. whenever you have this, Santi. Let me, um, let me say... That's independent on what the roadmap... Yeah, that's. Uh, mm. I, I wanted to say one thing that well, this agenda looks good in the terms of the main dots here. For instance, some weeks for panels, some weeks for data retrieval, some weeks for identity management. Mm -hmm. What we could do here is fill these uh, buckets with the information about the roadmap we are working on. I mean, uh, if Santi is going to prepare the roadmap for mm -hmm. the next month, or Santi or the rest of the people, together uh, to something. Mm -hmm. We can fill this with the things we are planning to do or with the, with the things we are going to do during this time. So we make sure that the things we share with the community are the most recent things we have in Grimoire Lab. So instead of, let's say, do the diversity and inclusion metrics because it's part of the chaos community, Let's go for something we are preparing because this is something that it's going to be released in the next weeks uh, in Grimoire Lab. So probably that's uh, why the community should be focused on and probably what uh, the community could provide feedback about because maybe mm -hmm. we are trying to do something that the community is not interested in. And in that case, we could try to... Uh, modify our our agenda for these meetings, but probably not for Grimoire Lab because Grimoire Lab has a roadmap for uh, at least uh, middle term, not long term. So well, I will try to mix uh, both things. One is having the main concepts for the meetings and then try to fill that with the real development on Grimoire Lab. And of course, this development is open to get feedback at any point. That would be the, the summary of all my <laughs> mm. monologue. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This sounds I also so. I have a comment on that. So, Alberto, just to make sure I understand you right, your idea is to keep the meetings flexible so that when there's something on the roadmap that needs feedback or some input, we can always do that. But to have a general topic, so maybe splitting something like we do. 40 minutes of the plant topics, and then we leave 20 minutes in each meeting to, for whatever is currently happening in the development for Q&A, for aligning with the uh, technical roadmap. Yeah, th that's the idea. And um, the way to fix the time uh, in advance is just going to the roadmap and see what we expect to have for, for that time. In, the, in that sense, panels is the easier because it's kind of independent from the other topics. So we can know in advance where we are going to work. So we can fix some small topics to work on and then get some feedback from the community to get uh, another things that maybe are not in the Grimoire Lab roadmap, but could be interesting. For instance, this diversity and inclusion metrics. Maybe there is a lot of interest for this in the community, but in our roadmap, we don't have anything about that. Well, let's use that time in the meetings at the end or at the beginning to discuss this and even working on build these metrics and let the community know how to build these metrics with the Grimoire Lab data. And the rest of the time, we can follow the schedule uh, based on our roadmap because we can uh, schedule that in advance while the other is more flexible. Hmm. So I would say as a, as a first step, what we can do from Viteria we are mainly driving uh, Blumar Lab development is to release the roadmap, like this is the roadmap. So these are the, the, the steps we would like to, to do in the next months. Um, then we can have a specific schedule based on well, Santis and Valerio's release. Um, and based on this roadmap, then we can start further discussions. Because as, as for instance, as, as Alberto mentioned is, well, uh, maybe we have in the roadmap like, uh, well, we need these certain things for Arthur and Percival. Um, so then we have these technical meetings and then there are other people bringing other discussions. And then, uh, well, the community decides to, to go to some other place. So, yeah, that's, that's perfect. But at least uh, everyone is aware of what others are doing. And I think that's, that transparent thing is, is important here. That's all. And, I, and, and I'm saying that we release that in, in, in this case, Viteria, because it's going to be the easier thing as a first step, because we just need to write down what we already discussed internally. So it's a matter of saying, hey, we have this. What do you think? Does it make sense? So I'm asking now mainly people out of Viteria, Matt, Armstrong. Um, what do you think? Say that again. So in terms of aligning with what Viturgia is doing? No, it's not about aligning with Viturgia needs, but uh, I see as a really easy first step that we release uh, our internal roadmap with respect to Grimoire Lab. Mm -hmm. So then once this is served with the community, then the community can start having opinions. Oh, yeah. uh, and I'm saying this because as we are kind of the technical leaders of the community, yeah. in this case for Grimoire Lab, it makes sense that, I mean, it's going to be really easy for us to release this because it's a matter of writing yeah. down what we already have in our minds. I see. Yeah. Then, I, hmm. So I think getting community feedback would be great. And um, I understand, was it Alberto who was talking about kind of aligning um, the roadmap? Mm -hmm. with the weekly calls. So I, I'm getting, I'm, I think I'm getting this. Um, so I think two points. One is, yes, I agree that having the roadmap coming from Baturgia and being attentive to that roadmap is um, 
critically important for this group because Grimoire Lab is clearly the piece of technology uh, that is critical to Baturgia. Um, and then getting feedback. I think this is what you were talking about, Danny, getting feedback on where people can or have an interest. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you're talking about um, with respect to the roadmap? It's not only about asking for opinion, yeah. but it's about asking. Uh, so once we have the roadmap, people will be aware of the next steps. Okay. Those next steps might be aligned with their expectations or not. And if they are not, then they can come and say, hey, uh, I would like to see this and this implemented because of this and this reason. And then this is a community discussion, not only a Victoria discussion. Yep. Um, so it's, so I don't want to have this as a Victoria says, and that's all. No, no, no. So this is a community. So, but I see that their very first step might be a really easy one. Just we release the roadmap and we say, this is our roadmap. What do you think? Uh, I have a suggestion, a very practical yeah. suggestion. We can start by changing the way we talk about it. And if you scroll down, I already did that three sure. lines down, where I say, it's not Biturgia to release the Grimoire Lab roadmap. Yeah. It's the Grimoire Lab maintainers. And yeah. we are maintainers of a chaos project. And it just happens to be 100% representative from Grimoire Lab but hopefully that will change. And so by changing the language and talking about the maintainers of Grimoire Lab doing this, we are already much closer to being a community project. I agree. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that um, ultimately, I, to your point, Georg, I, I'm guessing the, the hope is to grow the community around Grimoire Lab. And sending that signal, I think, helps that. Mm -hmm. I think that was partly your point. Um, I also think it's completely fine to know that um, Baturgia <laughs> has the, the clearest large stake in the Grimoire Lab space. I don't think there's any problem with that. Um, personally, I don't have any problem with that. So, so seeking input from the community is great. Um, but I also don't think it's a negative to know that Baturgia has a huge stake in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So thank and you. I, I, to me, that's just a kind of the normal way that open source communities run these days, or at least in the world that I'm in, <laughs> that there's oftentimes an organization that has a big, big stake in that piece of software. Mm -hmm. Um, it, everybody's super welcome to participate, but. Yep, some companies just have more interest in using the technology. Yeah, I think that's completely fair. So I think being transparent is good, but I think asking for community input, you know, <laughs> that weight, that asking for, for community input, maybe the window for asking is just a few days and then the ship sails, you know. Hmm. And then the work continues <laughs> in a transparent way. I think people will come though. I really sincerely do. Mm. Uh. But one thing I understand, like what we are saying, and it's very important when we have technical leads from Bituja helping the community, is just to mention like this phenomenon, which we know very well, it's like the elephant factor. Sometimes if we just acknowledge that, okay, yeah, this factor exists, but the community, we're trying to uh, address it, it will make a lot of uh, yeah, nice. yeah. Yep, because sometimes that. people from outside may want to study what we are doing. And when they see that without us really like in, in mentioning it, they might, they might think it's a weakness from our part. Because I know open source communities that are uh, actively preventing such things to happen when one uh, corporation is having like a, the elephant share of certain things. But we understand where we are and how we are coming up along. So if we ourselves should mention that this is how things are for the moment, then it's like try to validate. 
I like that quite a bit. That the that the elephant factor in this case is essentially one. <laughs> we recognize that, um, and and the goal is to to make a shift. I think this is what you're saying, Armstrong. Yeah. The goal is to, to move this, and there's there's value in in making this move, and so and I think part of that movement is this meeting that we're even in right now, right? Exactly. So, if you scroll up to the top of the document, yep. I'm putting together. I started putting it together an agenda that as a template we can start using for all future meetings, basically. Like up here, is that where you are? Yes, like, that's okay. where I am. Um, I don't see Daniel's screen update, but I assume. Oh, it's not? Just scroll to the top, Daniel. I'm at the top of the document, but oh, it's saying. Oh, it's updated now. It's, okay. It's <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so I think just to move this forward into actionable items, we could start every meeting with an uh, update on Grimoire Lab. And that is what um, we will reflect in the Chaos Weekly newsletter. Then we have a topic of the day, which is the um, long-term arc that we were discussing below where we pick one topic and it's close related to what we did the week before or it's a completely new topic um, but we have a schedule for these and then there's the roadmap feedback and discussion section that Alberto was very keen on having to discuss what is currently happening in the development and where should it be going or to also do some um, technical input and see if anyone is interested in picking up specific issues or something like that. So this is uh, go through GitHub issues, for example. This is good. Mm -hmm. So then what we do here is we insert a topic for each week, basically. Yeah. Yeah, for the topic for the first days, still we have the roadmap. We're going to start, Alberto and me, with the dashboards. So we have a specific topic. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I would like to to talk about this with the rest of, of the team because we have some issues open right now related to panels, to dashboards. So maybe we can uh, review those and try to choose the ones we consider more uh, relevant for for the community so we can start working on things that are already open which i think is the the way to go yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Yes. as we have our own small roadmap in sigils so we can share this with others and probably to be integrated into santi's roadmap and then yeah we can work on this Hmm. I had one other comment. This was for Alberto. So this is about, I think you had mentioned, for example, um, I'm looking at the notes. So for example, on Georg's draft agenda, say five weeks on panels, you know, and then um, focusing on the chaos metrics, say like DNI or evolution or value or whatever. And how you, I think you had mentioned that those aren't necessarily on the roadmap for Grimoire Lab. So I think your, your point is well taken that we do need to be uh, attentive to what can be community work and what is roadmap work. And so maybe we can also identify points where we can encourage community members to make those panels. <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking on. Um, Two different things. Okay. One will be having our development grimoire lab aligned with the community. So ideally, the topics we have uh, there in these five weeks should be the ones in the roadmap, and the ones in the roadmap should be the topics we consider more important for the community. Okay. And, and then the feedback could be, hey, these are not 
the relevant topics for us as a community. But at the first approach, we need to decide what we consider more relevant. This is uh, one point. Uh, okay. Start for having something and let's see if this is aligned or not. And just uh, through time, we can evolve this to be more accurate uh, in terms of the community needs because things that more of the development we are going to have in Gmore Lab should come from issues in GitHub. Mm -hmm. Those issues can be opened by the community and yep. community can be customers of Vitoria or other people that just want to have some issues implemented. So at the end, it should be the same and that should be the, the information that drives the development of uh, Grimoire Lab. Regardless of uh, Viterja or the rest of the people being the ones in charge of develop, uh, developing this. And the second point is my idea here is not showing just how to do things, but showing the latest features, having the community involved in creating their own ones. So instead of having only the input uh, in terms of feedback, I would like to have also pull requests with new dashboards, new metrics, or whatever. And then we can even uh, use one complete session for things that came from the community. For instance, I'm thinking about Valerio and the works that was done under the Google Summer of Code, which is uh, very interesting, and it's now under Sigils. And this is something that comes from, from the community and could be part of a session. They could explain us how they work to build these new panels, to get this new data, and mm -hmm. so on. So, well, that's, that's the idea. I would like to have this, but, well, let's see. I agree. I think that would be great. Okay. I did actually listening to you talk, who are the, if, if in this scenario, maybe we could talk about it later, but um, in the scenario, if I was to submit a new dashboard that um, was say demonstrating risk metrics, you know, according to the chaos definitions, who's the maintainer for that? These things might be important to express as well. You know, like if I'm issuing a pull request. Yeah, that's that's a good question because, well, it's clear that probably Daniel or me, okay, uh, Daniel or I, are the ones reviewing the pull request. Okay. But th the real question is, once the mm, dashboard is there, who is in charge of keep that dashboard updated? Yeah. I would say that the answer is the community. I agree, actually. Wh whoever the community is. So, well, we as part of Viteria, we are going to update the dashboard we provide to, to CGLs, to the community, yep. because we are the responsible of having those dashboards updated. Yep. With the rest, it should be the same, but it will happen that for some reason, a new dashboard is interesting also for us or for another people that is using internally in their processes or for the chaos community, or having in the dashboard, in the public dashboard we have. So the maintainer could be whoever is interested in having that dashboard, that dashboard in the... Yep. In, in, in essence, it's like having... It, in essence, it's like having the work groups actually upstream their work <laughs> to go... Yeah. The, the only thing I'm not sure about is probably we need to split seagulls in some way to make some distinctions between the dashboards because we have a number of dashboards right now and probably we will want to have more control about where to put a new dashboard and yeah. maybe make some distinctions about the dashboards that are being updated from one version of Kibana to a new one. Yep. So, uh, well, it was very interesting. Yeah. I, I would say 
if I had to migrate SIGILS, for instance, from one version of Kibana to another, I will try to migrate everything. And I even try to get the community involved in updating those dashboards that maybe uh, contributed, contributed by them. So maybe, I don't know if uh, we could find a way to organize the, the repository to make a distinction about between one or, or the other. Or maybe just, just make a distinction based on topics. For instance, uh, the, the different working groups we, we have in chaos could be a way of dividing the dashboards between common metrics, diversity and inclusion, evolution, don't know, or just by by data sources. But well, not, not having just a single set of, of things. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to introduce a way to categorize and show the panels in different groupings and to also include information on when it was last updated and what version of Grimoire Lab it was last known to work for. Um, having that information would be helpful for anyone who wants to pick up a panel. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hop off because I have, I'm gonna collect myself and I have another meeting in <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> it's kind of indeed. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what happens. I'm just going to stop my video and mute. You can all stay on because I won't leave the meeting because I think the recording would stop if I left. I think it'll uh, go over to me and I can continue controlling it. Well, let's give it a shot. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the meeting then and we'll see if that works. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks. No, yeah, thank you. I'm now host. So I can control the meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only five minutes to for the end of the meeting, so I think we can we can we can finish here. It would be great to determine the topic for next week. So right now we have chaos dashboards in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we have. So what we had in mind, Alberto and me, was. Uh, to introduce some of the dashboards that we have for open source offices, that they are right now stored in GitLab. Um, we wanted to migrate them to Grimoire Lab in Sigils. So this, this will bring the discussion about the several dashboards we have, or we can introduce one of them. Um, and then we can show how you can import and export dashboards. Um, and where the documentation is and so on and how to produce new things. And then we can uh, send a pull request to be review it to the community. So that was the idea we had in mind. What do you think? Yeah, then let's put that in the topic of the day for next week. Okay, so maybe I can copy and paste from this, like these two lines. Yeah, um, maybe we can remove it from today's agenda because we didn't get to it. Hmm. So I know uh, uh, Santi Valerio Madrique Armstrong. Any any extra comment? Yeah. Yes, but I don't know if my microphone works. Yeah, Do it you works. Hear me? Yeah. Yes. So, okay, sorry, because I mean, I have been like writing instead of uh, talking. More or less, um, I mean, I think there are good uh, ideas around, uh, but we, sh we should maybe focus on, on something first. In the sense, if, if the community doesn't know Grimoire Lab, maybe much idea is good, I mean, to start presenting uh, what each component does. So, for instance, uh, I work on CGs uh, and other uh, weeks on uh, Percival and uh, the other components. Mm -hmm. I still don't see the connection between the roadmap and the, and the working group. Because, I mean, I, I really think that we didn't uh, define what 
what is the objective of the working group because uh, everybody has given his own idea of what the working group should do but maybe mm -hmm. we should like uh, unify of all of these ideas in one that is common i don't know i don't know if you if you had this impression or uh, or not uh yeah yeah definitely so this is the way we've been working in some other working groups like saying hey uh we have uh, each of us let's say have our own idea of what we want to achieve in the working group align or synchronize with our personal expectations or organization expectations and then what we do is to have a common uh, working line that uh, we still have to define here in in the working group and then coming back to your point about what's how to how to match the roadmap with the working group is that uh, my expectation at some point is that well the, the Viteria roadmap is one thing and I think uh, having this public to for the next month is like saying we are going to work in these things from Viteria perspective but then we can see if other people are aligned because if other people are aligned then uh, this might be the same roadmap or the or we can do uh, certain things to uh, certain improvements or changes to the roadmap according to community needs. That's all. So this is uh, or this is how I see this. So I'm looking for the the common point of discussion for between the community and Viteria and how to be transparent and say, hey, we are doing all of this together. Okay. You know, we need. Uh, I mean, in, in in the diversity and inclusion working groups, for instance, this took like three or four sessions. So I'm not expecting to have a solution like tomorrow. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for. Uh, for. Uh, Or uh, can import us, but it already exists. So maybe if we want to go in this direction, we should um, think about uh, how to create a marketplace for dashboards, like a common place where we can easily share dashboards. So mm. this could be like an outcome of the working group. But uh, in this case, we are really focusing on on the dashboards, and yeah. maybe I don't know someone else has uh, other objectives. No. <laughs> yeah. I am I'm back in this meeting now. Okay, we are we are running out of time, so we can we can finish the meeting for uh, Lumar Lab. So uh, thank you very much to all of you for coming and attending. Uh, you know you have the minutes in the Google Doc, so that's all. We are now starting the weekly meeting for today. <laughs> Just realized that these are gonna do this. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> stop the recording so that we can start a new recording for the next. Yes, <laughs> please <Okay>. do. <laughs>